Bob Lest! Bob Lest! August 26, 2024, banned and restricted announcement. The magic list is out. Oh my god. All right, let's go. Standard, no changes. In Pioneer format, they are banning Amalia. Uh, Benavdi's Aguri. Why, why are they banning Amalia? Uh, okay, so this is a legendary creature vampire scout. It's a ward, pays three. It's a two mana, uh, white and black. Whenever you gain life, Amalia explores. What does that mean? <laughs> Uh, then destroy all other creatures if its power is exactly 20. Okay. I don't know why that's banned. I also don't know what the hell explore means. Does explore mean you get to search your library or something? Is that what it's called? Uh, keywords do be keywording. All right. Uh, Sorin, Imperious Blood. Oh my God. Card for ants here. What's the easiest way to like... Is there like a magic database some somewhere? All right. Sorin, Imperious Blood Lord. Uh, has been banned. So it's a it's a legendary planeswalker that requires three mana. Target creature for, uh, for loyalty counts as plus. What target creature you control gains death touch and lifelink until the end of the turn. If it's a vampire, put one one on it. Wait, that's absurd. Wait, that's actually insane, right? It so death touch is start of the damage step. You can pop a card basically, and then it also gives vampires one one and it gives it lifelink. Um, he's banned for the minus three. Wait, this isn't even good? Oh my god. All right, well, okay. So you may put a vampire creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Oh, okay, dude. All right, little bro here just like ignores summoning conditions and throws out like 10 mana cost big dudes for free onto the field. Okay, dude. All right, yeah. Soren is banned. See you later, Soren. I've played five hours of magic in my entire life. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, all right. Next up, we've got Nadu. No, not Nadu. That reminds me of Nadir. All right, why is Nadu banned? Uh, Nadu is a legendary creature that requires three, three mana. Flying, that's probably good. Creatures you control have, whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land, put it onto the battlefield, or put it on, in, otherwise put it into your hand. This ability only triggers twice each turn. Wait, hang on. I read this card in one of the guest the uh, things I did recently. This thing is crazy because... See, I didn't realize that you can target it with your own cards. Whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, you can use it yourself. And then trigger it. And it's twice per turn. And it just... And it just ramps mana. That's what that means, right? I'm not on misunderstanding how land works. If it's a land, put it onto the battle. So you literally just like... Just ramp mana for free, right? Oh, and it's soft twice per turn. So if you have multiple copies of Nadu, you just like start freaking like ramping to shit. That's that's pretty insane. Okay. Uh, good card. Nice. Grief is banned. Uh, grief magic? Is there, easier, like, is there a website that I can use this? Grief Modern Horizons 2. Is this the card? Uh, I, I think so. No, not tier limit grief. Hand trap grief. This one. Wrong one. Use scryfall. Scryfall grief. This is a hand trap and magic. Uh, it is the right one. Okay, cool. Uh, this is a four mana creature. Elemental incarnation. Menace. What the hell is menace? <laughs> Can I get a keyword explanation for menace? Hang on. Keyword menace. What does menace mean? Or is that like his type or something? An evergreen keyword, creatures with menace can't be blocked except by two or more creatures? How do you block with two monsters? Do you just add the defense together? Uh, when grief enters, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Evoke. Okay, now I need to know what evoke is. Exile a black card. Exile a black card from your hand. 3-2. So this is just like a 3-2 body on summon that can't be blocked, but loops your opponent for a combo piece out of their hand. Am I reading the right card? Someone said it was a hand trap. Evoke means you don't pay the normal mana cost. Exile a black card from your hand. So you just banish a card, a, a, a black card from your hand? Why is that good? I, I guess black has a bunch of things that trigger when banished. Summon from hand by exiling one card, sacrificing itself after. Uh, banish and play it. You don't use mana. Oh, it just makes it free? It makes it free? 
I think I'm seeing a pattern here. Two of the cards that have been banned are completely free. Weird. <laughs> that seems like a pretty good uh, mechanic. Vintage. Uh, what does restricted mean? Limited to one? Oh my god, actual freaking essaying card. Okay, there's a lot of Urza's Saga, apparently. This one. Uh, Enchantment Land, Urza's Saga. As this saga enters and after your draw step, add a lore counter. <laughs> Sacrifice after three lore. One lore counter. Urza's Saga gains tap, add diamond. I don't know what that means. What's a diamond? Is that a, is that a, is that a continuous spell? Enchantment or something? Um, colorless mana. Okay, add a colorless mana. You just add one. Okay, that's ramping, I suppose. Two cost, Urza Saga gains two. Tap, create an OO colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets one, one for each artifact you control. So are we talking like making just like big five fives every turn or something or something based on how many uh, uh, artifacts you have constantly on the field? Doesn't matter? Yes? No? Why is it good? Like what's the practical application of this? Uh, search your library for an artifact card. This thing searches Moral Tack and Scythe and Sanctum? That's crazy. Um, with a mana cost zero or one, put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle. What does putting onto the battlefield mean? Are you telling me that you can literally just cheat cards onto the field for free? That's just what put means? It just means like not paying the condition, just... <laughs> all of these banned cards that I've read all do something by cheating mana. It feels like that probably shouldn't be a mechanic. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I don't know too much about magic, but it seems to me that I'm seeing a pattern here. Um, that cheating mana is not healthy. Uh, restrict, okay, yeah, true, not banned, it's restricted. Uh, explore, what, there's a format called Explorer? What does that even mean? Okay, there's Amaria and Sorin again. Okay, so I kind of understood why Sorin was good, but why is Amalia good? I feel like I need more context for why this card is good. Uh, give me the practical application and explanation of why this is a good card. What is ward again? Uh, ward, keywords, Amalia plus wild growth guy. Uh, they have an article at the bottom explaining it. This is a ruling database, not a, what's it called? Amalia, there are loops to hit the 20 power level. Loops to hit the 20 power level. Evergreen keyword in introduced. Ward is a triggered ability. What the hell? I need to freaking read a Wikipedia article to understand what Ward does. Uh, ward was known as Frost. Whenever a permanent with Ward becomes the target of a spell or ability, an opponent, control uh, an opponent controls, counter it unless that player pays an additional cost. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so yeah, what's the practical application of this? They explain the list. Uh, at the bottom here, right? Yeah. That's fair. Wow, that's a whole ass multiple articles here. That's pretty useful. Um, yeah, so anyway, Amalia, what's the logic here? Uh, the format's two clear outliers that we'll be addressing today. Vampires and Amalia. As we've stated, the Amalia deck is one we've had our eyes on for a while. Creature-based combo decks are something we believe adds positive texture. Unfortunately, this particular version of a creature has too many problems. The deck uses Amalia and various ways to gain life to kick off a series of triggers that normally end with a 20 power Amalia. A slew of cards being drawn or milled, a larger amount of life being in, all their creatures being destroyed. And if that wasn't enough, players have found ways to give Wild Gulf Walker indestructible, causing the game to result in a draw as Amalia triggers an infinite number of times. <laughs> this is not ideal. <laughs> Weird. This is not ideal. As a gameplay experience and certainly was not something our team caught during playtesting the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, so as mentioned, um, I have played, I think, four or five hours of Magic total in my entire life. I don't remember any of the keywords. I don't know what the format is. I don't know how the cards work. But this is an honest Yu-Gi-Oh! player's interpretation of the format. This is a good ban list. They've really addressed the problems, like Amalia and Nadu. I'm really sad to see Lorewalker go, or the vampire guy. He was a good card. Um, he seemed pretty cool. Uh, my boy did nothing wrong. Etc. So this was mostly a five out of seven ban list. That's my analysis. All right. Bye bye.